Hello, and welcome to Rise Up with Rebecca Seawright on Manhattan Neighborhood Network. I'm your host, Assembly Member Rebecca Seawright, serving the Upper East Side, Yorkville, and Roosevelt Island. I'm excited to be here for Decision 2021 time. Uh, here today, with your help, with important information as we enter the fall election season. This edition of Rise Up will take a deep dive with our guest expert to examine the initiatives that will appear on the ballot on November 2nd, 2021, Election Day. Redistricting, environmental rights, elections, voting, voter registration, and lawsuits in a civil court are among the topics that will appear on this November ballot. Things can get a little confusing, but I'm pleased to have our special guest, Sarah, here today with us to help make sense of it all. She is Deputy Director of Common Cause New York. She joined in May of 2018. She's worked for a broad range of New York City policy and advocacy organizations in the last de decade. She has her MS in Public Policy from the New School here in New York. Sarah, welcome today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. If we could just go over the five amendments that people will see on the ballot and just give us a short description of each and um, so that people are familiar with the actual language that they're going to be seeing on their ballot. Sure, no problem. So ballot proposal one deals with redistricting. It makes some changes to the current redistricting process um, for the most part, we think that they are good changes like codifying um, a ban on prison-based gerrymandering, capping the number of state senators. And I think most importantly, it changes the timeline for the redistricting process in New York. So last time we changed new districting, redistricting, um, we had a September primary and the primary date has moved to June. So what we have is a redistricting process that no longer aligns with our election calendar. And so that's in part why this amendment was put on the ballot before voters right now. So we don't have an out of sync election cycle for elected officials and candidates next year. Proposal two deals with uh, New Yorkers right to clean air and a healthy environment. It generally just asserts that this is a core right for all New Yorkers. Ballot proposal three eliminates a 10 day cutoff for voter registration deadlines. Ballot proposal four would amend the absentee voting rules so that no voter will have to provide an excuse to vote absentee. New York actually has one of the most restrictive absentee voting laws in the country. Um, and this would greatly expand those who can vote absentee every election cycle. And proposal five deals with changes to New York City's courts. Um, it's a relatively small administrative change, but would give New York City's courts more cases to weigh in on just because of a um, change in dollar value. So Sarah, tell us a little bit about Common Cause and your position there. Your uh, organization has such a wonderful reputation. Thank you so much. So Common Cause New York has been around for 50 plus years as part of Common Cause, a national democracy rights and voting reform organization. We led the fight in New York in 2019 to bring early voting, automatic voter registration to New York. We were also the architects of bringing ranked choice voting to New York City. And now we are pleased to be supporting a yes on one, which is redistricting three for um, same day or rather voter registration deadlines and four no excuse absentee voting. Um, the other two proposals Prop two, which is on clean air and a right to healthy environment and prop five, which is in relation to changing 
the courts, um, we have taken no position on, but there are other groups that do support those ballot proposals. Very interesting. And maybe you could just um, list how best um, our viewers could get additional information or clarity around some of the amendments. We have lots of information on the Common Cause website, commoncausenewyork.org. And I'd like to just lead off with a few questions. For those who are not familiar with what is the underlying purpose of redistricting, what are the ways that a district can be impacted by redrawing of the district boundaries? Sure, so we're just taking, taking a step back is the process that happens every 10 years after the new census data is released. And as people move into the city and the state or out of the city and state, um, the population changes. And so every 10 years, we go back to redraw our political maps at the state and federal level, so Congress and the state legislature, to ensure we have political districts that reflect reality and the people who live there. And so that can work in two directions. On the positive, we can see communities that are better represented, um, aren't broken up by political powers. On the negative though, as we've seen in New York and across the country, unfortunately, too often politicians will wield their influence in the map making process and split apart communities in the hopes of consolidating their own political power. Well, it's so important to uh, be aware of these amendments that are on the ballot and also to really understand redistricting. Um, how will requiring district maps account for all the residents regardless of citizenship status, making the redistricting process more democratic? Sure. So one of the things that this proposal will do is enshrine the non-citizen population counts um, in the state constitution, and it will ultimately protect it from meddling uh, if we have potentially another President Trump situation and ensure that we have an accurate population count reflected in our political districts, because we want our elected representatives to represent all New Yorkers. Right. And, and what is, um, if we could just take a deep dive into prison-based gerrymandering that we've heard so much about, how has this been a problem in the past? And do you think including prisoners in their residential census uh, is more beneficial to them and to society? Absolutely. So New York is one of the fortunate places in which we don't allow prison-based gerrymandering. However, we do want to take this additional step by a yes vote um, to enshrine it in the state constitution to ensure it cannot be stripped out by bad faith actors um, who have less than um, positive motives for redistricting. And so what we see is that what too frequently happens is that folks who are incarcerated are political pawns of politicians in the redistricting process when they are counted at their place of incarceration because it doesn't really reflect who they are and where they are actually from in the communities they come from. And so that's why we're advocating for this push to put it in the state constitution so that when people are incarcerated, um, they're not defined by that incarceration when it comes to political representation. Excellent and so interesting and so, such an important issue. How exactly will proposal one reduce party influence on the map making? Sure, so our hope is that this will happen in a couple of different ways. But one thing I do wanna highlight is that what we've seen happen year over year in the redistricting process in New York is that one way that politicians will expand their influence is by adding additional state Senate seats. And so one of the things this will do is cap the number of state Senate seats at 63, which is its current number, to ensure we don't have either political party looking to expand their influence by adding additional seats. And so that's just one of the ways that a yes on one vote will ensure that we hopefully balance out political meddling in the redistricting process. Terrific. And I have long advocated to make it easier. You think of uh, to be able to register to vote and to cast your ballot. 
And you think of New York as a progressive state and a leader on so many fronts. But one thing that we're playing catch up on is the ability to register to vote uh, in different forms. And so why is it so important that voter registration cutoff be eliminated? Sure. So New York is a little bit interesting. As always, we actually have two different voter registration deadlines. We have one that's in state law, which is a 25 day cutoff. And then we have one in the state constitution, which is this 10 day cutoff. And so what we want to do is give more time back to New Yorkers to register to vote. And so by eliminating this 10 day cutoff period, it will give the state more flexibility to allow people time to register to vote. And we think that's incredibly important as we look ahead. And what are some of the, um, so that's some of the pro, but what are some of the opponents of that saying, um, you know, that harm that could potentially happen from that? Sure, we've heard a couple bad faith arguments that we really don't feel like reflects reality or the experience across the country. But one of the things that is frequently said is that this this will somehow uh, result in voter fraud. We're not quite sure how that would work, but that is unfortunately one of the arguments that we've heard. I think it's important to for our viewers to understand what the other side is saying because there is such, um, uh, misinformation out there uh, on the various amendments. We're here as a resource. Uh, you can call our office at 212-288-4607, and we're happy to uh, provide you with information. So Sarah, what kind of um, involvement do you see from voters as we start to debate proposed amendments in the state legislature? Um, are there advocacy uh, groups out there that different voters can join to express their views and to help uh, with the legislative process? It takes a lot before we actually see an amendment on the ballot. So if you could just walk us through um, the process and what voters can do to have a voice before this amendment actually shows up on the ballot. Sure, so I would say what voters can do right now is reach out to three friends or family members and remind them an election is happening and encourage folks to make a voting plan. And so it's really simple. It's a who, what, where, when are you going to vote? So are you gonna vote early? Um, like I said, the deadline to vote absentee has passed, but if you did get your ballot or you requested your ballot, make sure you send it back by November 2nd. Um, and make sure that folks are prepared, know what's on your ballot, uh, do your research on the candidates and the ballot proposals uh, before you head into the ballot box. But taking a step back in terms of how we got here, as you know, any change to the state constitution is a multi-year legislative process. And so what happens is that a law is drafted. Um, it has to go before two different sessions um, among legislators. And so that has to happen every two years. And then once it's approved by the state legislature, twice, not just once, then it can head to voters for final approval. And so it is essentially designed to make sure that because it is two different groups of state legislators, um, it has the full support of New Yorkers and it accurately reflects the will of the people because changing the state constitution should not be you know, something that we can do so easily or at political whims. There, there are these legislative safeguards in place. And so now that they're finally before voters, um, you know, this took five years, essentially, for changes to no excuse and uh, shortening the voter registration deadlines. And so we're thrilled to see this finally come to fruition. Common Cause New York has been advocating for the two voting rights changes for years. And so it's super exciting to have voters weigh in on this finally. It absolutely is. And, uh, you know, it takes a lot. One of the things that our office is working on is the Equal Rights Amendment uh, and updating that to our state constitution. And so um, it takes a lot to get to the point where you actually see that amendment on the ballot. But I encourage voters and uh, to write their legislator, or call their legislator and express their views on uh, what they would like to see changed in our electoral process. 
process. As you mentioned, New York is one of the most restrictive states. And so as we start to update um, our constitution and our voting laws, we love to hear from our viewers on their particular concern or their interest, or if they have questions in literally understanding the language. So again, we're here as a resource. Uh, you can call our office at 212 288-4607, and we're happy to uh, provide you with information. And one quick question, Sarah, when will these amendments, when will they be actually enacted if passed? Sure. So they essentially take effect immediately because these are changes to the state constitution and voter approval is essentially the final step. Once voters vote yes or no, and all they need is a simple majority to pass, there's no threshold beyond a majority vote, um, they will take effect. And so that's great news for New York City voters and upstate voters and for our redistricting process. It's so important that this goes into effect immediately, just given the timelines we're up against. And it's not easy to, to get to the level where an amendment actually is on the ballot. So uh, there's a lot of legislative history that goes into debate uh, before these amendments actually are allowed to uh, appear on the ballot. And so I think it's so important for us to get clear and concise information out there to voters on what exactly the amendments are, what they do, what the pros and cons are. And um, do you think um, that we will see a, an overwhelming turnout for this November election? Or are you thinking that people are feeling that um, they don't have to go out and vote or they're afraid to vote during COVID? I know in, here in New York State, we started with the 10 days of early voting, which starts this Saturday. And um, I know here in our local community office, we've been fighting for more accessibility to early voting sites and also to get it out of the public school system. So on Roosevelt Island, for instance, um, at the sports park, there will be an indoor voting site for the island. Um, a year ago, the residents had to travel into Manhattan during the 10 day early voting period. But what are you hearing out there on the street? I know we're getting calls at our office from people um, that are still very confused about these amendments and are looking for additional information. We had a senior citizen call us recently. There's a uh, she was on the permanent absentee list to always mm. receive an absentee ballot without requesting it. Uh, she's 92 years old and there was a barcode and the way it was printed, there was no way the barcode could be seen through the window on the envelope. As it turns out, because she was a permanent absentee voter, her barcode was um, underneath her return address. It had been printed, but it was still very confusing and something that we hadn't seen before. So um, what else are you hearing from voters out there as we approach early voting this Saturday? Yeah, sure. So one of the things that we uh, are constantly hearing from folks is that they didn't unfortunately know about the ballot proposals. And so that's why in part Common Cause New York, the New York Civic Engagement Table and Make the Road have launched a yes on one, three and four campaign to make sure that folks know to flip their ballot because the ballot proposals are on the what would be the equivalent of the backside of your ballot. So you have your candidate elections on one side and these proposals will be on the other. So it's so important to flip your ballot to make sure you have a chance to weigh in on these vital changes to our state constitution. But I think people are excited to go out and vote. In New York City, we obviously have a mayoral election on the ballot as well as council races and borough president races. So I think folks are energized and we're hoping to see um, equivalent turnout to the last major mayoral election that we saw in 2013. Uh, you know, obviously upstate, there are hotly contested mayoral races. So we do think that folks are actually engaged in paying attention, given what's going on at the top of the ballot. Right. And we want to just encourage everyone to really exercise their right to vote. Uh, starting on this Saturday, October 23rd, early voting in person starts uh, for 10 days. And you can call our office or common cause to or the Board of Elections, but our office can be reached at 212-288-4607. And we will help steer you to 
um, your correct early voting site if you don't know it. Uh, they do change uh, from time to time. So uh, we're happy to assist in that. And again, if you have any questions about the amendments, please turn over the ballot and read each one carefully. And if you have questions or you want uh, to study it in advance, uh, we usually put on our storefront window an actual copy of the ballot so that people can pass by and see it so that when they get in that voting booth or they cast their ballot absentee, um, they're familiar with what the ballot actually looks like and the language of the ballot. And so um, we've found in the past that that's very helpful. Um, so Sarah, if, if our viewers have more questions on the amendments that will appear on the ballot, um, can they log on to the Common Cause website, your sure. phone number, your website ID? Yeah, not a problem. So we have lots of information on the Common Cause website, commoncausenewyork.org. Um, for folks who do live in the city, the Campaign Finance Board has an excellent website that is nonpartisan and will also provide information on all of the candidates that are currently on the ballot. Uh, that's nyc.votes. Either two are great resources for the candidates and the ballot proposals. As we're on the heels coming off of celebrating the 100th anniversary of women getting the right to vote, I think it's so important that we encourage everyone to get out there, call your neighbor, call uh, anyone that's disabled or a senior that might need help getting to the polls on election day. And so, um, Sarah, it's just so important, the work that you do at Common Cause and other organizations around the city, like the League of Women Voters. And so what, what parting advice could you give to voters out there as they prepare to exercise their right to cast their ballot? Yeah, absolutely. I would definitely just echo what you said. Um, don't forget to flip your ballot. Uh, I would also do a small shout out to absentee voters. The deadline to request your absentee ballot has passed, but please be sure to return your ballot by November 2nd, which is election day. If you are going to mail it back, make sure it is postmarked by the 2nd. You always have the option though, to drop off your absentee ballot at any early voting or election day poll site. So there is that added flexibility if you just don't have time to go to the post office and you don't have stamps at home. So we are trying to make it as easy as possible to vote absentee and obviously also vote in person with early voting and our election day voting. Um, I would guess the last thing I would just mention is if you do have the time, um, I think it's worth spending a little bit of time doing your homework on the ballot proposals. It is sort of like lengthy and perhaps a little time consuming to go through and read all of them in fine print on the day you choose to vote. So any advanced work you can do, great. But if not, just go vote. There'll be plenty of time and poll workers will be happy to help you. And we never never know what the weather is going to be like on the actual election day. So Always I just true. encourage Yes. So I just encourage everyone to cast your vote early during those 10 days of early voting. And if you do have an absentee ballot that has come to you, uh, you can always drop it off at the early voting site. And if there's a long line, just simply go up and tell the person you're here to drop your absentee ballot so that you won't have to stand in the long line of the voters. Um, and so again, we encourage you to look at the ballot either online or at our office and really understand that on the back side you have to flip over and read those five amendments and make your decision. And uh, by being prepared with your mask during COVID and a pandemic, we, like I said, we never know what the weather is gonna be like if it's pouring rain or, uh, so it, it's just such a wonderful opportunity in New York State to be able to cast that vote early during the first 10 days. And again, we just encourage all our viewers to uh, call our office or uh, log on to Common Cause and League of Women Voters and other websites to uh, find additional information. And uh, we're just encouraging everyone to understand today the five amendments that will be on the ballot and to remember to exercise their right to vote. 
and uh, to really take advantage of that 10 day early voting period in New York. Uh, we haven't always had that, but then again, we always haven't had the right to vote as women. And so we really wanna encourage people to take advantage of their voting rights and to be prepared and to understand. And in a pandemic uh, like we have seen, it's so important uh, to be prepared wear your face mask into the voting place. And uh, if you have reading glasses, um, I know it can be dark sometimes in there. If you need a flashlight to help you read the small print on the ballot, there's just so many steps that you can do to prepare for that all important exercise of casting your ballot. Sarah, if you could just repeat again for our viewers um, your website and how they may log on to review more information about the ballot. Sure, so right on our homepage, commoncause.org, um, you will be able to take a look at our guide to the November election. So it contains all of the important dates for voters around early voting, absentee voting, and on election day. And it also provides an overview of the ballot proposals. If you're looking for information about specific candidates, I would definitely suggest folks check out NYC.votes because that will contain additional information. And it's a very exciting time in our electoral process in our history here in New York. We'll be electing a new mayor, uh, a lot of new city council members and having recently had a change at the state level uh, with our new governor coming in. So I think uh, now is the time to really get familiar with the ballot and understand uh, the different columns and the different amendments and what you'll be voting on. So again, we're here as a resource. Uh, you can call our office at 212-288-4607, and we're happy to uh, provide you with information. And Sarah, do you have some parting words for our viewers? Like I said, just make sure you flip your ballot. You can always vote early or on election day. And like I said, for absentee voters, be sure that you return your ballot by November 2nd or drop it off at any poll site. Thank you again, Sarah, for coming on and uh, best wishes as you continue to educate voters. We just appreciate so much, Sarah, you're coming on Rise Up today and uh, discussing these amendments with us and encouraging people to really exercise uh, their right to vote. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for having me. Thrilled to be here. Thank you for tuning in and watching Rise Up with Rebecca Seawright today. And uh, we appreciate your joining us to learn more about the amendments that will be on the November 2nd ballot. So thank you again for joining us. Thank you,